This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, was given into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Amen. O God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine, in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are 
the gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I was in elementary school, there seemed to be the idea that we all learn the same way. It wasn't until years later that I think humans realized that maybe we don't. Some of my friends were the type of people who learned best by reading about things or listening to people talk about different subjects. I was not one of those people. I found it difficult to learn that way. I needed to see things and touch things, and the best way for me to to learn was by doing. If I can do something once or twice, I can generally make sense of it. I think that Jesus knew somehow that people learn in different ways, and so he taught in different ways, so that his message would be accessible to all people. Throughout his earthly ministry, he'd speak about a subject He'd read from scripture, and then he'd do something that illustrated his point. When it came time for Jesus to celebrate Passover with the disciples, he knew that he was going to die and that he wasn't going to be physically present with them anymore. He knew that he only had only a little time left to make sure that those who followed him would have everything they needed to continue his work in the world. After all, They were going to be the ones that spread the message of God's love and salvation across the entire planet. He had to prepare them. So that night, Jesus reiterated his most important teachings, and he did it not only by talking about it, but by giving concrete examples. When Jesus wanted to teach the disciples about servant leadership, he got up and took off his outer robe and put a towel around his waist. Then he got down on the floor and began to wash the disciples' feet. They were horrified. Seeing Jesus wash their feet would have been like us watching the Queen of England herself get down on the floor to wash the dirt off of our feet. It just wouldn't seem right. But when Peter questioned Jesus about it, he told him, you aren't going to understand it just yet, but you will, later. When I'm gone, I want you to do this for others then you'll understand. Jesus was teaching his followers that those who want to be truly great must never consider themselves greater than anyone else, but always be ready to serve another human being, humbly and with sincerity. Jesus gave us an example so that we could do what he did, and in so doing, remember both him and the lesson he taught. That is why tonight we would normally wash feet, so that it is not just a memory or something we talk about in theory, but a current lesson that is still being lived and taught. Due to the pandemic, we are not going to observe this ritual tonight, but we remember it. After Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he shared a meal with them. It was a Passover meal, which was a symbol of God bringing the Israelites out of slavery and into the promised land. The meal was already being used as a teaching tool about God's saving work. And on that night, Jesus made it a complete symbol of God's salvation. Jesus broke the bread and shared it with the disciples, telling them that it was a symbol of his body, which would be broken for them. He shared the cup of wine and made it a symbol of the blood that he would spill for the sake of humanity. The meal was from that moment on a symbol of God's complete salvation. The sacrifice of Jesus' body and blood and his subsequent resurrection brought new life to the world. So after sharing the bread and the wine, Jesus said, do this in memory of me. He said, do this and keep doing this so that it'll be a sign for all generations that God has saved us and that we've been given new life in him. Every single time we share this meal, we remember the hope and the new life that is ours. Jesus tied these two lessons together by giving us one last thing to do. He said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. That is the third and most important example that Jesus gave the night before he died, the example of love. He loved us so much that he died for us the next day His service and his sacrifice could only really be known in his love. Every time Jesus said, do this in memory of me, 
He meant that at all times we should do these things in love, acting out of love and mercy and compassion for other people. Otherwise, the symbols and the actions lose their meaning and the lessons they're meant to teach won't really be learned. Tonight, we will see and do the things that Jesus asked us to keep doing in memory of him. And I pray that every time we do them, that we'll learn his lessons of servanthood, salvation, and most of all, love. In doing these things, we can truly know what it means to be his disciples and continue to do his work in the world. And I pray that we will share these lessons with countless future generations so that the world will continue to know all that God has done and continues to do for us. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. Be mindful, O Lord, of your people bowed before you, and those who are absent through age, sickness, or infirmity. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, inspire the faint-hearted, and bring the wandering to your fold. Journey with the travelers, encourage the oppressed, defend the widows, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Strengthen all who are in tribulation, necessity, or distress. Remember for good those that love us and those that hate us, and those who have desired us unworthy as we are, to pray for them. Remember especially, O Lord, those whom we have forgotten. For you are the helper of the helpless, the savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. You know the needs of all and have heard each prayer. Save us in your merciful loving kindness and eternal love 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Commemoration of the Lord's Supper. O Lord, most glorious Lamb of God, most tender priest and human, we praise and glorify you for the blessed sacrament of the body and blood, wherein your servants celebrate the mystery of your redemption and your love and the partaking of your spotless and immortal life. We beseech you that by these holy gifts we may be made holy and have a portion and inheritance among the blessed who have pleased you from the beginning of the world, to whom with you and the Holy Ghost your honor and glory, world without end. Amen. We adore you, O God, and our whole, with our whole heart we bless you. For you do sustain and renew us in the communion of the most holy body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the utmost glory of your love, the very seal of our redemption, the wonder of our souls. And we beseech you that he may abide in us, speaking grace and peace into our lives until we be possessed of everlasting life in him, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, one God be all glory, honor and worship, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, do give you humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness, which you have made known to us. We bless you for, your, for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, in your inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and we beseech you to give us an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. Father, we spread this table to remember the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son. Accept all we offer you this day. Bind us together in his love and in the love he has commanded us to bring one another through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. By his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with all the host of heaven who gather around your throne and the Lamb, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer, redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On this very night, he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread. Communion in Christ's body once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If, if we, we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Those wishing to do so may make their spiritual communion by joining in this prayer with me now. 
I worship and adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, present in the Holy Sacrament and in your people who are gathered in spirit. In this moment, I join with them and receive you in my heart and in our community. May you, enthroned on the altar, be now enthroned in my heart. May you, present in bread and wine, feed and renew my soul. May you, who give yourself to us again, fill us with grace and heavenly blessing. Even as I am fed, may my hunger for you and your reign of justice and peace increase that I may, with your spirit, work for that day when your reign shall come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave his life and died for us. 
yet is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Close me in 
and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Stay. 